Welcome back to Afraid Movies today. I will be explaining the movie Rubber. Warning, spoilers ahead. The movie begins with an accountant who is standing in the middle of the desert. He is holding a great number of binoculars in his hands. Numerous chairs are positioned on the road nearby. Deputy Pete drives a car through the road. With his car, he on purpose knocks off the chairs on the road. The car stops and Sheriff Chad comes out of the car's trunk. Chad asks Pete for a glass of water. Chad approaches the camera and explains to the audience that many moments in cinematography happen for no reason. All movies carry an important component of no reason. He also explains that many things in life happen for no reason. He asks the audience, while watching the movie, to keep that in mind. The movie is a tribute to no reason. Finally, Chad looks at the camera and pours the glass of water onto the ground, illustrating that he did it for no reason. The camera pans backward and we discover he has been talking to a group of people. The accountant gives each of them a pair of binoculars. He tells them to look at the distance behind them to watch the movie. The audience without a question does what the accountant told them to do. The accountant leaves. In the beginning, the audience does not see anything. A little boy starts to complain he is bored. His father tells him to be patient and to watch a little longer. Soon the audience spots a dumping ground. Unexpectedly, a tire named Robert comes to life. Robert, the tire, starts to move through the sand. It takes a couple of minutes for Robert to find his balance. He starts to roll around the desert. The first thing Robert bumps into is a plastic bottle. He rolls over the plastic bottle and crushes it. Next, he comes across a desert scorpion. Robert also rolls over the scorpion and crushes it. He continues to roll and notices a beer bottle. He tries to roll over the beer bottle and crush it, but he can't do it. Robert decides to use his psychokinetic powers to blast the beer bottle. The audience is very impressed with Robert's powers. One man starts to film Robert. A woman next to him says that it is illegal and he should stop filming. He says thank you and continues to watch Robert. Robert continues to roll through the desert. On his way, he crushes several other objects with his psychokinetic powers. He is doing this for the rest of the day. When it gets dark, he goes to sleep. The next morning, the accountant arrives. He wakes up the audience. It is time to watch the second day of the movie. The audience is hungry, but they are more interested in the movie than the food. The audience continues to watch Robert who now drinks water from a puddle. He spots a rabbit nearby and decides to again use his psychokinetic powers. The innocent animal explodes right away. Robert is very happy to see his powers work on living beings. He is overwhelmed and goes on a killing spree. He wants to find and kill more animals. On his way, a beautiful girl in a car drives by. He begins to use his power on the girl but he only manages to make her car stalled. Robert approaches the car, but at the same time, a truck comes by and runs Robert over. Robert picks himself up and he's angry. He starts looking for the man who ran him over. He finds the man at the gas station. The man notices Robert, but ignores him. He is unaware that Robert wants revenge. Robert starts using his powers again and blows up the man's head. The audience is in shock, but still very interested in the movie. Robert is rolling near a motel. The girl he wanted to kill is at the motel. He comes into her room and starts spying on her. He is watching her taking a shower. The men in the audience also start looking at the girl. They start commenting on her body and looks. The father in the audience takes the binoculars from his son. Robert is looking at the girl for a long time. He does not kill her. It appears Robert is attracted to the girl. She goes to bed and Robert also goes to a nearby room to stay for the night. He is watching TV before he falls asleep. When Robert goes to sleep, so does the audience. Meanwhile, the accountant is also in the motel. He is preparing himself for the next day. He kills a turkey so he can feed it to the audience. The next morning, he leaves the room and encounters the cleaning lady, Martina, who wants to clean his room. On the third day, the accountant wakes up the audience. He throws the raw turkey on the ground. The starving audience starts ripping the turkey apart and devouring the meat. A man in a wheelchair is the only person who does not eat the turkey. 
In the motel, Martina enters the accountant's room. She notices the bedsheet has black spots. Martina walks into the bathroom and sees Robert taking a shower. She is unaware Robert is alive and believes the accountant left the water running by accident. She picks up Robert and throws him out of the room. This makes Robert furious. Robert gets up and slowly rolls into the room to kill Martina. Zack, the motel owner's son, notices Robert going inside the room. He tells his father, but he does not believe his son. He thinks Zack is bluffing. He sends Zack to get some pizza. At the same time, Robert kills Martina and is now watching TV. He rolls to the swimming pool and sees the girl he likes. She leaves the pool and Robert jumps in the pool and starts to swim. The audience is guessing will Robert sink or float. The son in the audience has stomach pain. His father is worried. Right away, every audience member starts to get sick. The man in a wheelchair says that the turkey was probably poisoned because he is the only person who is not sick. Zack sees Martina is dead and calls the police. Sheriff Chad is investigating the case. Zack tells him that Robert killed Martina. Zack picks Robert up from the pool, but Robert does not move. Zack thinks he has drowned. His father can't stand this nonsense anymore and throws Robert to the ground. Chad is asking the father some questions and his watch beeps. Chad is happy to announce that the audience died. This means the movie is over and they can finally go home. In the next scene, we see the dead bodies of the audience in the desert. Chad is happy to announce to his team that they can go home because the movie is over. His team thinks he is crazy, but Chad explains to them that they were acting for the audience, their badges are not real, and nobody died. Deputy Dennis does not believe him and shows him Martina's dead body. Dennis claims they should investigate who killed Martina. Chad remains stubborn in his statement. Actually, to prove his point, Chad asks to be shot. One of the police officers shoots Chad, but the bullet does nothing to Chad. At that moment, the accountant tells Chad that the person in the wheelchair is still alive. Until he dies, they have to continue acting. Chad looks at his team and explains to them that he was joking. The team laughs it off and continues to investigate the case. Robert comes to life. He uses his powers and the motel owner's head explodes. Chad is in shock. He informs his team that the killer is Robert the Tire. Without questioning Chad, his team believes him right away. Zack tells the police Robert ran away. Meanwhile, the accountant approaches the man in a wheelchair. He gives the man some food he has previously poisoned. The man refuses the food and continues to watch the movie. Deputy Xavier and Deputy Pete are in the police car. They are following Robert but are too scared of him. Robert again uses his powers and kills Pete. Xavier is in shock and lets Robert go. The accountant is telling a story to the man in a wheelchair. He tells him when he was a boy, he killed his brother. While he is talking, without thinking, he eats the poisoned food. Ultimately, the accountant dies. The man in a wheelchair watches him die but does not do anything to help him. Robert comes to a place where a man is burning down the tires. Robert watches the tires suffer but does not help them. Three days passed and Robert made a big mess. He has killed almost half the population. The police still have trouble finding him. Robert is watching TV when two police officers notice him. They call Chad to help them because they are too scared. Chad makes a plan for how to kill Robert. They dress up a female mannequin with dynamite and a microphone. Their plan works and Robert notices the mannequin but he does not kill her. At the same time, a man in a wheelchair approaches the police officers to get a better view of the movie. He mocks the police for their ridiculous plan. Robert finally blasts the mannequin's head, but the dynamite does not go off. Chad walks into the house and kills Robert with the shotgun off screen. The man in a wheelchair is not satisfied with the ending. The police ignore him and leave. A couple of seconds later, Robert comes out of the house. He is reincarnated as a tricycle. Robert kills the man in a wheelchair. Finally, the last audience member is dead. Robert is now free. He recruits the army of tires and they all roll to Hollywood.